Nope, not fig. She's a false goddess. Quick analogy, false goddess on God's days. All right, y'all. Interesting. Um, uh, next Friday is um the first day of Adar. The first day of Adar. That is very significant, important. Adar is the holiday, is, is the month in the Jewish calendar is where God does his miracles. You know, that's where it's really Adar is God season. You know what I'm saying? God does his almost everything on preceding Adar. Um, uh, the Exodus, um, whole lot of stuff, you know, a lot of other stuff. Um, concerning um the what uh, East Esther Esther redemption and all that kind of stuff. So every, a majority of the miracles that you know happen is on Adar. You know, like it's a Perum Perum or something like that. Uh, Adar is where it's God season. It's in God season is in spring, pretty much. But the topic of this message, um, I was with my friend Undine yesterday and she had a, a had to play for a gig in Orlando. And I was um there and I saw I mean I saw parts, probably parts of Orlando, one part, huge hotel and everything else and it and how huge it is. I'm like, wow, that you know, I don't really travel as much. But, uh, and I see, you know, all the stuff pretty much that man built, you know, um, I look at men interaction with each other, you know, I watch the everybody's interaction with each other, um, uh, about how people are so confident in the system of this world, you know, uh, how people, you know, how people place their security on a system of men is just amazing. If if you have eyes to see spiritually and look at uh, really what's going on and what the kingdom of darkness have been set up, the trap that they have set up for everybody, um, looking at men in their comfort zone of this world system and, and, and how they interact like, oh, this, you know, like nothing's wrong and nothing's bad is not going to happen. And, you know, I see how, you know, they're, you know, very conscious that everything is going to flow well and everything is going to be good, even though things are getting bad and worse and worse and worse and pl- Places apart the world, places a part of the world, <clears throat> and the thing is, you know, I look at everybody, you know, in their relaxing comfort zone, how they spending time with this person, doing this, doing that, and it's like, you know, it's this blank to me, this blank. I, I mean, to me, people spiritually have this blank uh, awareness. It's just like. Nothing bad is not going to happen, you know, no, nothing, no, something bad happening, you know, oh, come on, are you serious? You know, kind of, I sense their vibe like that, their vibe was like, oh, nothing's, nothing bad is not going to happen, you know, and it's amazing how, to an extent that, you know, I wonder, I mean, is Christians, (laughs) well, professing Christians, um, how much you do you analyze really your spiritual outlook on that you're hopefully developing uh, about you and your comfortness of this world system? You know, how much are you maybe comfortable in this world system? Um, you know, I talked to a person in uh in the laundromat, and I was telling people about simple history, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, the Egyptians got hieroglyphs about talking about, yes, we lived at a period of time and it was awesome. It was great. It was wonderful. It was terrific. Then something happened, you know, um, that 
the same ideal aspect that, you know, I, you know, can probably see in those, you know, Egyptian hieroglyphs that, oh, we was doing this and everything's good and everything's well and everything's all right. And all of a sudden, you know, that's what makes this trusting in men so dangerous. You know what I'm saying? The comfort of you day, day to day, you know, uh, operating in this world system and how comfortable that you are. Oh, I'm going to go, go to my friend's house. I'm going to go to my family house or I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go here and, you know, do the daily thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's amazing. I see how powerful it is. The comfort zone is that people, you know, uh, are resting in men's uh, they trust men that are known to be liars. I mean, just read the word of God. Paul says, God be truth and every man be a lie. How many times people have to lie to you to think they're not a reliable resource of truly putting your dependence on everything is all right to them. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's really, it's really crazy outside looking in spiritually at people in their comfort zone and their trust in men. I'm going to read my boy, Jeremiah, you know, the prophet Jeremiah 17, put it blatantly plain as possible. You know, does say it the Lord curse it be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arms and who's watch what you do when you do this this is the most important part of this uh verse here very important part of this verse when we trust in men and whose heart departs from the lord who heart depart from the lord that, you know, I'm seeing men and how they are so caught up in their activities in life and how how they're like, you know, zoned out to any possible dangers that might be uh, coming from to where, it post, to where it's coming from, that they're just not, um you know, they're not there. I mean, really, they're not there of thinking any bad thing can either happen, you know, and I bet you see it around you or you might be one of those people that are like, oh, everything's all right. Everything's all good and nothing bad is going to happen. And the Bible didn't say, you know, something bad is going to happen. It says that people will say peace and security or peace and safety. And all of a sudden, destruction comes. I mean, you will think the people in the Bible speaks of that, and we will have a great awareness about that idea, but it's a lot of conforming activity concerning Christians, you know, concerning the church. It's it's a lot of, it's dangerous. I mean, I, I, I see how much Christians are not doing, you know, and are not aware to what extent the, what is going to happen very soon, or will they be in, how much they will be impacted by it. And it's, 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 it's dangerous, you know, that, you know, when you put your place, your trust in men, I mean, you know, and even not only the hieroglyphs of Egypt, in uh, uh, per Persia, you know, Mesopotamia, they have hieroglyphs of people, you know, yes, we doing this. Yes, we doing that. Yeah, we doing that. Yeah, we doing that. And then all of a sudden, what happened? You know, it's, it's the pattern throughout human history. Something was there. Something was going on. Something was there, but boom, something happened. You know, and the thing is, look, Jesus said, it shall be like the days of Noah. Yeah, it, it, they said it wasn't going to rain. It said it wasn't going to rain. I mean, they were like, you know, I guarantee you they're like, what rain? What rain? What rain? You know, ain't, I don't see no water coming out of the sky. And then all of a sudden, boom, 
It started raining. You know, we need to respect the word of God. You know, as what I love about this person that analyzed the Bible, he uh, found out the center part of the Bible concerning the chapters of the Bible uh, is centric off of Psalms 1, 1, 11. Uh, I mean, Psalms 1, 18, sorry, Psalm 118. And he found out the center of the scriptures, if you put the whole Bible in the center of the scripture is this simple message that we just need to understand if we truly want to be in a true relationship with the Lord and continue to grow closer to him. It says, uh, I rather not trust in, I'll trust in the Lord and not place my confidence in me. You know what I'm saying? Let me read it. It's sorry. It's better. It's better, you know, what I'm saying to trust in the Lord than to place than to put confidence in men. That's in the center of the whole Bible. That I hopefully most a lot of Christians can come to that understanding about this ideal because I'm seeing a lot of people and y'all see it too. Of people are so comfortable and conform to this world and not aware of that God is going to do something very soon. I mean, I just told you that Adar is what next Friday. Uh, Adar is coming up soon, and Adar is the month in the Jewish calendar is where God does his miracles. You know what I'm saying? He he does a lot of stuff in that kind of time in near spring that we need to be well and well prepared. And remember Isaiah 61, um, Isaiah 61, that talks about, uh, well, let me see, Isaiah, yeah, at the, near the end, it talks about concerning when spring forth. Let me go to there. <laughs> spring, uh, if those that are of, of the bride of Christ are aiming to be a part of the bride of Christ, in Isaiah 61, it talks about 11. It says, for as the earth bringeth forth their bud, that is spring, as the gardens cause the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 11. So, and if you read up the 10, it says, greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garment of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with uh, ornaments. As a bride adorns, itself, adorns herself with jewels. This is all in springtime. So springtime is coming and approaching. So we need to be learning, be you having a desire to trust in the Lord, then place our confidence in men. But trusting the Lord is dangerous. I mean, trusting in men, sorry, is dangerous. That we need to understand how dangerous it really is to be, tr be trusting in the Lord. I mean, trusting in men. You know what I'm saying? How many times men's got to... Uh, this bring hurt, pain, and disappointment to people to understand that they sh we shouldn't trust in them. Should speak for itself, but unfortunately, when we, as what e I Jeremiah says, when we put our arms unto the flesh and thinking that the flesh has the ability to take care of us and disappoint us too many times, we need to wake up spiritually and say, "Look, our God is our protector." Our God is our provider, our God, our God, not these men that are on an agenda to be about the, the, the agenda of the Satan, agenda of the kingdom of darkness. You know what I'm saying? But our God can protect us. Our God, we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. All right, that's the message. Hope you do not trust in men and live a dangerous life according to Jeremiah 17 and Five. That's the message. God be glory. Him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.